Hi everyone, Dorota Palicka, International Needle Artist and Educator here and again one stroke. <laughs> I'm kind of sometimes uh, thinking like, oh my goodness, I'm painting too much one stroke, but I cannot stop. It's so relaxing, it's so beautiful and that's, uh, you can also check it in here. Yeah, and that's the flowers which we are going to create. So absolutely stunning flowers and uh, with a little bit of the stamping as a background uh, just to make the flowers to pop out more and also to make this uh, design more interesting. I hope you will really enjoy watching this tutorial. And if you're new in here, hit the subscribe button as there is lots of tutorials coming out on Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays, plus some extra ones uh, through the week as well. And if you're existing subscriber, I'm sending you a big Kisses for all the support uh, you are giving to this channel and I can see how slowly it's growing bigger and bigger. So I've got this beautiful flower guys for you and I'm going to show you how to recreate this look. Uh, I've got some black tips which are already black. Um, but you could use it uh, also different colors as well. One stroke looks good on any kind of colors. I'm just applying the black tip. And my first step would be to buff it so we can do some nice background first. I'm just going to give it a couple of the scratches. So when when I would be doing this uh, design on the client, I would paint them black. Say, example, if we're going for exactly the same look. So paint them black, apply the top coat, buff it, and then do a redesign with the stamper. So I've got some nice stamping plate with some laces. And that's what we are going to use as a background. I think I'm going to go for this one for a change, just so it's slightly different one. So I'm using the Born Pretty stamping plates and actually all the stuff I find that they've got pretty cool stuff. Now I'm just going to transfer it on my needle. So we've got a beautiful white transfer. And I think for a one stroke it's a really big time saver when it comes to the background. And then on the side, now you've got two options. Uh, I might actually do it and more difficult, more difficult option, like more time consuming. Um, I'm going to apply the top coat. And the reason for applying the top coat again is, I know it sounds maybe like waste of the time, but believe me, when you're painting one strong and something goes wrong and you want to wipe it off, you don't want to lose all the stamping which you've got behind. Um, so that is kind of like a protection for you. This way you wouldn't have to repaint it uh, again if something goes wrong. So I'm just going to put the top coat and give it a cure. It's not as much time extra really, uh, but it can save you lots of time if something goes wrong. Now we are going to use some red uh, acrylic paints and I like really like them. This is a number 11 red. Some of them got like, I've got them, oh gosh, sorry guys, it's a baby wipes. <laughs> Cameraman is like, oh my ears. <laughs> Uh, so I like to use the baby wipes uh, just because they're really great for like clearing the paints. Uh, actually this one is almost at the end. So I've just squeezed them out and then I can clean the coverage because it can be kind of messy-ish. And then we are going to use some pink as well. No, maybe not this one. That will be too dark. And we'll go use a flesh one. This one is really nice for painting a faces as well. Like I use it as a skin color. And as you can see it, I've got really right down on the end of those paints. And I'm going to need a drop of white. And that's cool. 
we are going to use my demaster brush and deliner brush the really fantastic ones so the first step is remove the tip which has cooked take a tiny bit a um, couple scratches in so we can paint the one stroke nice And for the painting, like very precise designs, it's better if you don't use you guys. You guys ask me this question quite a few times, and I think it's a fantastic question. So this buffer is much rougher on this side and not as rough on this side. So this one is 180 by 100. I would use the softer side uh, to do the scratches on my design. The reason for it is if you've got two big scratches, the paint can get badly stocked in there and it's not as matter if we're painting something bigger uh, but it is really matter if we're painting like a such a nice and small detail like say I don't know an um, eyelashes in the eye uh, that's what really uh, will be visible like if it gets stuck so I'm just cleaning my brush a little bit now I don't use lots of water um, and I quite like it to keep it in, in a nice shape as well so we are going to paint like those flower is kind of more advanced um, flower um, so I'm using two different colors on the higher point of my brush I've got white with those flesh color and then I'm dipping in my brush the other side into the red now I'm mixing those paints and the paint has to feel nice kind of creamy consistency uh, here, here is really really warm like with all the lights for recording so I will like need to kind of um, uh, keep it and uh, adding more paint so I'm starting straight brush then light it press it kind of massage the paint in to create a first petal and you can see it I'm lifting my hand up uh, a little bit just to see what is going on like you don't want to give it too many shakes of the hand like um, if you do over shake it I find it like that's where the things goes really wrong and that was my biggest mistake when I start painting the one stroke uh, I was shaking too much so touch 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 you can kind of like when I'm lifting the hand up uh, I would go half a millimeter before the place I have left to lift my hand I'll just try to explain it again <laughs> The paint is kind of on the drier side so what I'm going to do sometimes dip in my brush in the water and excess this look what my spot uh, my wipe did it did absorb the excess of the water because if you put too much water then the coverage you know is not as nice <laughs> okay so I'm just going to finish this petal so it's nicer now another one so I'm kind of giving gaps in between those petals and those first ones I don't want them to be too strong like uh, if I would paint them too strong then the next ones which are going to go on top of it uh, wouldn't stand out as much okay another one I'm kind of shaking my hand a little bit but it's a very little one now this petal overlap the petal which is underneath so you can see that this petal just went over it it's a time when I have to get um, the first layer of the petals to dry a little bit so that's what I'm doing I'm waiting for my petals to dry a little bit and at the same time to save the time I'm going to paint another ones on the top And I maybe wouldn't have to mix it my paint as well but I quite like it when the colors are not too separate I want them to really be kind of like an ombre now I want some petals on the top as well just because we've got those empty space so 
So I've got one, leave it a small gap, another one, and here a tiny wee one as well. Okay, so this layer has dry and I can paint another row of the petals. And the petals are just going kind of overlap each other. I have added a drop of white on my mixing palette. And now leave the gap again. So angle, the brush is at the angle. Touch, 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 and it's kind of like massaging. And now I want my colors to kind of be stronger. I don't know, like maybe not stronger, but a better coverage. Because then they need to be more visible than the ones which are on the bottom. Okay, leave another gap. And another. Here I want a tiny wee petal. Yeah, so they're not the same. Okay, so we have created another row of the petals. And you can see this way they really nicely stand out. And it's also the way how I use the colors as well. Um, so on the bottom, I've got them kind of more mixed together. There is not as much color separation. And then the next row, you can see the color is more separated. And the closer to the middle I will go, I might go even more whiter rather than pinky side so that helps kind of um, define the colors and make the petals more visible okay um now i have turned my tip and you guys have asked me oh gosh i've got to paint mix it wrong let me blend that out You're going to make this one extra extra long so you have guys asked me this question like oh how do you turn someone's neo and i have shown it like on some sounds videos uh, when you're painting one stroke you can easily so normally clients hand is i'm trying to don't run away normally a client's hand is in this position so i would paint like this but it is easy to turn a client hand this way. And I have demonstra demonstrated it on the one of the videos. So you can really place client hand 360 degrees as well. Um, <laughs> just checking. Uh, and you can paint it like the one stroke same way like we are painting. Obviously, it is not going to be as quick movement like this. But it is possible to put a client hand into different position as well. And because I do it in a salon, sometimes it is like needed for me to do it as well. Um, yeah, but let's let's paint another petals. Um, one stroke is definitely like, I mean, is definitely my favorite technique and um, I just love it. I mean, that's why like uh, obviously I've got the brushes as well, like for the one stroke mainly uh, because I feel like I felt like I couldn't find my favorite one. It was always something wrong, like maybe a size or a bristles of the hair. And uh, with this one, I'm finally pleased. <laughs> so I'm just going to touch up this wee petal here. Okay, now leave the gap and we are going to paint another one. I can't, you can see again, I've got a difference in the color as well. So again, this is going to be more visible. Basically, I'm just touching, guys. The, the brush is so precise, like it's in the shape of petals so I'm almost only touching and when I stop shaking my hand my hand like you would do see in the video like now I'm going really slow so you can guys see it um, but um, I might actually show you that as well because it's a really good example so see I would mix my paint and then it might look kind of like this on the videos sometimes and it is this movement as long as you're painting like a really big petals, yeah? So when you're doing shakes. And uh, on the big picture, yes, that's how I would probably paint it. But this is such a small detail that if you're going like this, you have no control over it. So just stop this movement like, and then your designs of the one stroke, believe me, will start looking nice. Because my one stroke was really ugly as well on the beginning. I couldn't paint it. it 
nice um, and that was the main reason I just didn't know where I'm going with my brush because I was so concentrated on shaking my hand that's that's I couldn't just like place my brush in the right position so um, for such a small painting skip the hand shaking I will try to do it very slow here for someone who who see it the first time so touch touch I do kind of more massage it so look massaging the paint because I'm doing it so slow you can clearly probably see what I'm doing but if I will be going quicker then it might look more like a wee kind of shakes okay but I'm feeling like I'm <laughs> taking quite a lot of time sorry guys now the leaves so I want them to be the same color just for this design I feel like it is going to be pretty pretty nice and I love this part so I don't want to hide it too much because I think it looks perfect so I'm just doing a small leaf now again some um, for the leaves the brush is in a straight position like straight position now bring it it and change the angle of the brush so the pink touch pink and then the white one is going there touch 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 finish okay one more time touch going to the top and because the brush has those pointy bit it's creating kind of a nice shape already bring it down change the position of the brush touch 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 okay and we have created leaves now I'm missing for a balance small leaf there because I don't like this part as well I have bring a lot of water a lot of a little water into my brush just because the paint is drying a little bit now I'm going to paint another leaf here and and that's it don't overdo it okay now the details so I'm just cleaning my brush I don't want the paint to dry on it and we are going to paint a nice detail so I'm using the D-liner brush now and I need to squeeze out a drop of the black paint so I'm just squeezing out a drop of the black paint and this middle is going to be super cool as well I'm sure guys you are going to love it same like me especially for the one stroke paint so let me get also yellow and a drop of green and a drop of green okay so in the middle of this flower we are going to go very watery black so I've got lots of water in my brush lots of water in my brush and I just created a couple of the black movement of the brush really then green let it dry clean my brush actually I've got another one in here so yeah okay let it dry clean, clean my brush pick up white so I've got some white in here lots of water like lots of water so clean my brush if the paints dry too much on the brush you need the brush to be really nice and move movable if the paint dry it's not good so I just clean it that water droplets and um, I'm picking up the paint and I want you to see how much paint I've got can you see it there is almost nothing or well, hardly anything this is even too much um, I actually clean it a little bit so that's a perfect amount of the paint you cannot almost see it I have talked too much now the paint is drying probably no it didn't and this way I can paint the micro micro lines 
I don't want too heavy outline. I want only some places to kind of um, have those white highlight, white definition really. So if I would be painting like a wee face or stuff like that, this is a kind of amount of the paint I'm going to use it. Okay, and another one just on the top. For the leaves, same, there is hardly any paint. This is too much paint. That's why it didn't turn out nice. Now here I'm going to have a right amount of the paint. Can you see it? There is hardly any paint on it. So this way I can create a really nice veins inside my leaf. They look much more natural. Same in here. And now hardly any paint for the veins. Okay, now we can start finishing the middle. So again, pretty watery paint. And now I'm going to dip in my brush in a yellow paint. So there's just a tiny bit of the yellow paint. And I'm doing lots of dots. I do not recommend it using your best brush for the dots. It is extremely damaging for your brush. And she keeps doing it, huh? <laughs> Cameraman is laughing. <laughs> don't do it, guys. Like, really, don't do it. It's extremely damaging to the brush. Because uh, basically you are breaking your fine, fine point for a really nice... Uh, detail uh, but I'm kind of rolling my brush to fix it um, I can see it I have rolled the tip of it already so honestly don't do it because then you don't get a nice lines and you could keep going like this with those um, small dots until you're really happy I've got black and green now again. I really love this kind of middle because it's so nice and delicate and looks like a real one. Yeah, I think I'm going to finish. No, I'm going to add one more line. <laughs> Sorry, I just love painting one. St oh, I shouldn't like adding this line, but it's good. I can show you what to do. So... If your paint goes wrong, you just take a baby wipe. And because the previous paint is already hard and the one on the top wasn't hard, it's easy to wipe it off. So I need a bit more definition here. Now I'm going to also, oh, this is a good one. I'm going to... That's for those ones which are watching till the end. Um, um, I'm going to create an extra petal here, which didn't exist. Just by adding the line. Okay, that's plenty. Last one.
and that's really plenty. Uh, the one stroke always pops out much uh, better, like it's looking much prettier once we put the top coat over it, and that's what I'm going to uh, do it. Uh, and there was also another good question as well. Uh, how much would you charge for the nail? So this kind of one stroke, like when it's so time consuming, like at least a 10 pound per nail. Uh, for the quicker flowers, I just charge about five pound per nail. So it's good if you kind of got like a wee price list set up uh, for the things, but look how much it pops out once the top coat goes over it. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. Now I also, I was thinking to start doing maybe an Q and I, um, you and I videos because I think that will be a time when I could answer like I'm really reading and I'm trying to answering all the uh, all the comments and questions um, but I was thinking about uh, going to Q&I as well uh, to answer even more questions so here we've got the previous tip we have painted and that's so so nice one I really like it uh, even if it is just a kind of one one color so you can just do a, any kind of lacy stamp uh, on the bottom and then paint it any color and it's a different type of flowers i'm definitely going to show you more of the one stroke like on peony flowers some orchids uh, if you're new in here hit the subscribe button existing subscribers please share the videos for me because i'm trying to kind of like uh, do it more and more uh, they are tutorials of those blinny nails on this channel as well tutorials of me doing on sculpted acrylics yes um and then that's this tip half cured uh, already so i can show you the final results both of them uh, really nice and oh i've got the light reflection see when the top coat is over it uh, you cannot really see come on no no it's not the strand it's the way that's it i've got it it's just the way how the light reflect on it so you can see almost my all the lines on my hands as well but i hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial and uh, i will see you next time glittery hacks and bye for now